of these holy hadiths of Sayyidina Muhammad Just recite a few and inshaAllah the next few nights or in some short period of time soon we'll try to go over them in a little bit more detail. A'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajeem, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Raheem. From Anuman ibn al-Bashir reported that Sayyidina Muhammad had said, Verily in the body is a piece of flesh in which if it's sound the entire body is sound, if it's corrupt the entire body is corrupt, truly it is the heart. Another hadith of Prophet is that one with a heart swept clean and truthful in speech. And Sahabi had asked Prophet that, uh, we know truthful in speech, what is a heart swept clean? And Sayyidina Muhammad described one that is mindful of Allah and pure, in which there's no sin, no aggression and no envy. And we said, who, sign, who shows the signs of it? Ya Sayyidi Ya Rasulul Kareem, one who hates worldliness and loves the hereafter. And they said, and who shows signs of it? And Sayyidina Muhammad a believer with good character. As everything is reduced by Prophet down to good character, adabin al-Rabbi fa ahsanan fi tahdeeb The Prophet ﷺ's only claim, not that I'm a great messenger, not that I'm this, not that I'm that, that, that Allah sent me to bring the adab of the heavens and has perfected my character. And as a result Holy Qur'an Allah describes Khuluqul Azeem that Allah Almighty describing, you are of a magnificent character because Allah created that character. Allah knows what reality He put into the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad So Abu Dar reported that Sayyidina Muhammad had said, وسلم, had said, wealth is in the heart, poverty is in the heart. Whoever is wealthy in his heart, he will not be harmed no matter what happens in this world. Whoever is impoverished in his heart will not be satisfied no matter how much he has in this world. Verily, he will only be harmed by the greed of his own nafs. Another holy hadith of Sayyidina Muhammad the servant does not attain the reality of faith until he loves for his people what he loves for himself of goodness. People whose hearts are like the hearts of birds, they will enter into paradise. And we talked a little bit about that, we stopped there, there's 40 of these beautiful hadiths of Sayyidina Muhammad that deals with muhabbat and ishq and love. And the bird is symbolic of awliya. So many times when we see birds around, they, they are a symbol and manifestation of very holy souls that our ability is not to see these souls and not prepared to see them and they appear as birds and that's why all over Jannat al-Baqi is a beautiful like a ocean of beautiful birds of these pigeons and every now and then there's one right in the middle that's all white. And they don't put any of their body waste onto that grave area, how much they have ihtiram and training. But the bird is symbolized what we said before of an immense love immense love for Allah and it's this love that is not the head. And awliyaullah come and teach the first zikr, La ilaha illallah, la to your head, then learn in life to shut your head. Your head is the thing that causing all your confusion, the head is where the nafs resides. The nafs becomes a partner with shaitan make shariq to come against Allah So every confusion is in the head. So the tariqahs come, the first zikr is, La ilaha illallah into the heart. And that the heart 
is the abode and the house of Allah and Allah then takes and teaches us, clean my house, purify my house, wash my house and circumambulate my house means make your body to move to the will of your heart, not your heart to follow the body. This dunya, this material world making everyone's heart to follow something they know is not right, do things they know is not right and Allah is reminding, no, force your body to do that which is correct and that will make Allah to be happy. Then they teach that it's not the size of your head because the head is actually the thing causing the problems. So the bird has a pea brain. So physiology of a bird is a like a pea. So this insan with the big head can do nothing. He cannot talk and communicate like an ant, he cannot fly like a bird. So what makes him to feel he's so special? With his big head he's not able to do anything. So then Prophet is say, if you have love like a bird you are the people of paradise. That that bird comes to teach a symbol for them that it's not about your head, learn to shut your head off and bring the light and the love of Allah into the heart. Make the heart to be a source of power, then the bird comes as an example then you must be completely trusting in Allah And then this is where our life's testing comes. Why are you concerned about your money? Why are you concerned about anything in your life? Why not be like the bird that has absolutely no concern? It doesn't even think that, I'm 5,000 feet in the air and Allah is going to not let me fly anymore and right down. If we walk on a stick on the ground you have no problem. If you take that same stick or beam and put it in the air immediately your fears you can't walk. Why fear? Because I'm going to fall. How the bird has no fear? Not thinking that it's flying so high and that Allah will cut it off and not be able to fly in the next two minutes. But for us everything is about maybe he's not going to feed me tomorrow, maybe my rizq won't come in again, maybe this won't happen, maybe that won't happen. Every type of fear then Prophet is describing for us in this just a little example of a bird which is a huge ocean because the bird is re representing awliya. And this diwan when people see a, an association of birds around means the awliya have appeared. And when we go to Mecca and Medina many times the birds come on the windowsill of your room means there are awliya there and they're calling upon you. They represent and can present themselves of these birds and the peacock of them is the representation of Sayyidina Muhammad When they have an association they're all present as birds and then the ruhaniyat of Prophet when it appears as a peacock with a full bloom of beautific colours. And the bird that represents Sayyidina Mahdi is the phoenix, is the, boor, the bird of war that coming. That does a different subject but on <laughs> this bird it's about tawakkul, it's about having love, it's about shutting the head and opening the heart. Have faith that Allah will provide everything if the character is good, if the love is good. Hence when we have doubt in our lives it's maybe because we don't think that our love and our character is perfected. If you believe your love to be sincere for Allah and you believe your love for Sayyidina Muhammad is sincere to your ability, Ya Rabbi I don't know how I can show my love anymore. If you reach to that level what do you have to fear for? Allah says, you love me and I love you. I don't even want to harm you by taking your soul. You're from Ashiqeen of Sayyidina Muhammad why I'm not going to feed you? Why I'm not going to provide for you? Why I'm not going to shelter you? Why is it that you doubt me? Then it becomes like a sadness then all these songs of, of, of ishq and love they feel a sadness. How could I dare doubt Allah 
So that any time the doubt comes they're teaching then there's something wrong in your love. If you perfect the love because you can't rely and that's why awliyaullah know that you can't rely on your salah, you can't rely on your zakah, you can't rely on any of your actions to make you feel that Allah is going to provide everything. You have to be truthful to ourselves that my prayers if Allah wanted to give my sustenance based on my salah I'm in big trouble. What makes my salah to be so great that Allah is going to send His sustenance for me? Why I'm going to pass my test because I, I prayed, because I fasted? No, because I love you Ya Rabbi, when I love you, I love your Rasul to the best of my ability. I may not be able to like love him like the next person but Ya Rabbi I'm trying my best to love I want my love to manifest and I'm going to show my love. I'm going to come, I'm going to support, I'm going to do, I'm going to bring food, I'm going to, to show so that that love it manifests in something. The shaykhs come to take the love within your heart and bring it out. When we do the grand milad it's our community showing and putting our love on our sleeve. Love is not hidden. You have to show your love, say, Ya Rabbi look this, this band of 40 families and 30 families is going to put on a festival and, and a beautific sign of the love of Sayyidina Muhammad to show our love. And Allah no doubt accepts that love, so it means they even teach by example that make a life in which you manifest that love. If you have that love, if we have that love there's nothing to worry about. Allah if you love like that you must know with all your heart and soul that Allah loves you and everything Allah sends to you is like a gift to embrace you, to dress you, to fragrance you because you are from a shaqeen that you love what Allah loves and what Allah loves is Sayyidina Muhammad We pray that Allah increase us in this Divinely Muhabbat which opens for our heart the stations of iman and faith. In that station of faith is all blessings and all light in which every difficulty, that's why Prophet was describing, if you really want wealth, the real wealth is the muhabbat. You're studying in school hoping one day you can get out and get a big check. If you, why would you spend $200,000 for a degree that your parents don't even know what you can do with it? Someone came out, one of our, our big ulama came out with a, what was it? An arts degree? Arts and crafts? You got an arts and crafts degree? All for what we're doing? To get a rizq, to get a sustenance, to get everything. And others are just saying, why are you relying on that? How is that going to get your sustenance? That's only your brain hoping your brain power will get you somewhere. If you spend just a little bit of your time to develop the love, the muhabbat, the ishq, and then know that Allah that you love Allah Allah loves, Allah loves you, everything will be taken care of, every rizq will come. Then Prophet is describing, that's a wealthy one. His wealth is by the love that Allah granted to him. You cannot achieve any love and muhabbat into your heart if not Allah doesn't put it. And when Allah puts love into your heart of the Divinely Presence, you are the wealthiest person on earth. That's why that hadith was telling you. But if they give you ten million dollars and your heart is black you'll never even find satisfaction in the ten million. Your life will be shallow and, and empty until sickness visits you and you have remorse. They said when Steve Jobs was dying his biggest remorse was not all the wealth he achieved but the lack of love and surrounding himself with that love. That the wealth couldn't buy anything and love is not something you can buy. Love is something you have to achieve that Allah puts within the heart. We pray, Ya Rabbi grant us your real wealth, not the wealth of the material world, Ya Rabbi but grant us this ocean of muhabbat to enter into our heart. Refresh and renew our iman at every moment Ya Rabbi, make us to be from ashiqeen so that we sit, our children sit and all our generations of children to come to sit 
and that they send their fruits of their amal to us when we've long passed from this world. Subhana rabbika rabbal izzat amma yasifun wa salaamun al mursaleen alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Bi hurmati Muhammad al Mustafa wa bi siri surat al Fatiha. Welcome to Muhammadan Way YouTube channel, your premier destination for videos on Sufi spirituality, classical Islamic teachings, and realities of the soul. With a library of over a thousand videos and new titles uploaded weekly, join us to discover true meaning and inner peace in our often troubled world. Click the link now to subscribe.